Welcome to this tip session for getting to know your business central better. Also welcome to our NAV customers who can enjoy a few relevant tips along the way. And a warm welcome also to people who are interested to see what it's like to use Business Central in action. So over to you, Shivak. Thanks for the introduction, Amanda. So yeah, today's first and hopefully a series of many webinars that we are planning to conduct on Business Central. Uh, today's session is more about general tips and tricks and a lot of features that have got recently introduced in the product and there are also some of my kind of favorite features which are very helpful in day-to-day -day use of business central but not many users are aware of them so i'll just get started soon and before that uh, we are obviously on the cloud version of business central and we're talking about version 16 which was launched around april this year so i'll just move on to the agenda for today's session so these are the six topics that i'm planning to cover today so we're going to start with the recent enhancements and some of these enhancements would have come in very recently around april this year but some of them also got introduced in version 15 which was around October of last year. And then I'm gonna show you what user personalization abilities the product has. Then we can go through how we can set filters or views on a lot of list pages as we call them. Uh, page inspection, that refers to looking at a record in further detail or looking at a lot of fields or columns in the background, which you cannot sometimes see on the user interface there's also a nice feature in business central which is edit in excel where you can basically dump a list screen or a journal as an example into excel and make all your additions or updates in excel and put, publish your changes back to business central and another last feature that I want to cover again, I find it really helpful is the ability to actually save report filters because a lot of time we run reports and we have to run a certain report few times with different combinations and we end up changing the filter combination every time. But there is an ability in the system to save a combination of report filters and reuse them in a few clicks. So these are the features that we are planning to cover today and just from quickly to our nav audience a lot of these features are already there in nav and as far as possible i'll try to it might not have to the time to show them in nav but i'll quickly cover what a uh, different way of doing the same function is there in nav as far as possible so we're just going to move on to the recent enhancements first and i'll take you to the product so as i mentioned this is version 16 of bc on cloud we are using a demo database and the company's name is cronus and they are into manufacturing of furniture so using this database as a sample i want to take you through some of the recent features so one thing that did get very recently introduced is the full screen mode so i think uh, initially when business central came out a uh, common complaint was as you can see now it doesn't take up my screen space fully there's a lot of space on the left as well as on the right which i could make use of but i did not have the option of expanding this view earlier but what has happened recently as you can see there is this arrow in the top right corner once you click on that so the view automatically expands and now i'm making optimal use of my screen and if you want to go back to the previous view or the narrower view you can click on it again and it goes back to that view so this is again something very simple but very useful that has got recently introduced another requirement that many users face is to have multiple business central windows or sessions open at the same time so at, to just give you an example, maybe I'm on my sales orders. And while i am got the order open, I also want to look at 
some of the items or even the customer that I'm selling it to in the background. But I also want to keep this order open at the same time. So how do we do that? What I could do is in the search box that we have in the top right corner, I can first search for the page. Let's say I want to look at the list of items and I click on items. It kind of opens as a pop up window. It's at this stage covering my sales order screen and I've lost the view. But like I said, my objective is to look at both the screens in parallel. So the button that I'm going to use is in this top right corner. There is this option saying open it in a separate window. So the moment I click here, it has actually opened a second window in the browser without me having to open a second session of Business Central. And now I've actually you can look at both these screens in parallel. So I'm looking at a sales order and at the same time I can open the item record which I'm selling on the sales order or the customer and look at some more details there. So you can have two business central windows from your same login session running in parallel. And obviously if you could have two or more monitors, you can also move this second screen to a different monitor. So that's again, I, I feel this is very handy and I can again close this and go back to my previous sales order. Another thing, uh, I think this is where our NAV customers, they are used to something what we sometimes call as a departments menu in their right hand, left hand side. And initially when Business Central did start out, we did not have a complete menu as such. So depending on the profile that we have, uh, let's say business manager, there are a few shortcuts provided on the top menu panel but if there was something else that i needed to access outside of my role typically i would need to remember the name of the page or the report i need to search for that page and then open it from my search results as an example so a good thing that i have again got recently introduced is these three horizontal lines on my home screen. So when I click on this one, it takes me to the whole application menu. So again, for the NAV customer, this you can say similar to the departments menu that you use. This is, again, first it starts with a restricted view, but I have this option over saying explore all. So when I click on that, I've got all the different modules that the application has to offer and I can click on a particular such as purchasing then under purchasing I can look at what are the different reports as an example so this is especially helpful for existing users the, because you can see all the standard screens or reports that are there if you go through this explore or option you can actually see a lot of standard reports which might be useful to you. So you can, like the link says, you can explore the product using this menu functionality. And then if I go back, and if I click on the company name in the top left corner, I'm back to my home screen, but I can always revisit the menu at any time. So that's again a recent introduction in Business Central or in the cloud version. Another thing uh, which we sometimes refer to as shortcuts. So as I mentioned earlier, depending on the profile that you're using, you will uh, definitely have some quick links here. But even within those quick links or there's something outside of this menu that I want to frequently use, I have this uh, option of now saving it as a bookmark or a shortcut. So as you can see, I've already created some shortcuts here. Let's say I'm going to run a report called my balance sheet. So when I run a particular report or even when I bring it up in the search menu, you can see this button over here, which is uh, gives me the ability to bookmark that search result. So when I click on that button and now I have bookmarked it. So even without opening it, if I go back 
to my home screen as you can see that report has popped up here in my bookmarks or shortcuts and then next time i don't need to search on it i can open that report using a single click from my home screen and the last very handy recent feature that i do want to show you is something called as the focus mode so again i'm going to use the sales order as an example and let's say i've got the sales order open and as you're aware there is a line mode here in this example that we are looking at there's only one item in the sales order but obviously in practical scenarios we can have 10 15 sometimes number of lines in the sales order section but i as you can see there is a restriction here i cannot see many lines at the same time or i cannot see all the columns at the same time so let's say i've created a sales order i've populated the customer and address details and so on and now i'm interested in adding multiple lines together more efficiently so if you see under the lines in the top right corner again there is this button where you can enter focus mode for that part so when i click on the focus mode system automatically expands that section and now it is actually using your whole screen so this gives you the ability to enter data faster make changes and once you are done you can click on the same button to go back to your original document view so you might see this focus mode on some document screens or sometimes journals or what we call sub pages so these are the few recent features that i wanted to take you through most of these features are also available in nav today's session we're going to illustrate them how to go about in bc but most of these features are also inherent in nav so starting with changing the column width i'm back to our application and i'm probably going to use let's say the list of items as an example so the features that i'm about to show are applicable to any list page in this case i'm using items as an example but you could do it to your customers vendors chart of accounts or even documents such as sales orders purchase orders posted invoices and so on so to begin with i have this layout and it could be that i want to change my column layout i want to expand a particular column or i want to shrink it i want to hide one column i want to add certain columns which are not in the view and so on so we're going to look at all those features under the personalization section so if you open a list page and in the top right corner of the screen you have a settings button and the first thing that comes under the settings button is the option to personalize so i'm going to click on to start personalizing this screen and the moment i start personalizing if i want to add a particular column i need to click on more and then system gives me this option saying add a field so when i click on add a field all the other fields which are available on this page but not shown will show up on the right hand side as a list so if there is something in particular that i'm interested in and i always want to see it when i open up my items list all i need to do is simply drag and drop it into the header row and when i do that i need to choose the position as well so as you can see i have added the item tracking code as a column at this stage i don't have data in it if i look at any other column and i think it's taking up too much space and i want to shrink it i can do that as well so for example on the inventory column i'm in the header row i'm going to go to the right of the column where i see this and double-sided arrow popping and then i can drag the column to the left or to the right to adjust the width of the column right at the same time there could be some columns which are showing here but they're not useful to me and i don't want to take them to take up the space so i can again go to the header row and i look for this red triangle and i need to click on that 
And when I do that, there's this option of hiding it. So let's say I do not want to see assembly bomb as a column. So I'm going to hide it. So when I hide it, it actually goes back to this list on the right hand side. If in future you wanted to add it back, you can again go into personalization, say more and add field and put that same column back into your view. And then when I click on done, my personalization will get saved. But just one more a very nice feature with related uh, regards to the column layout that I want to show is the use of a freeze pane. So as you can see here, my space is limited and I have a lot of columns here. When I keep moving to the right, I'm going to lose visibility of what my item number or the description is as an example. So what they have done already here you see this red vertical line here that is actually a freeze pane it's very similar to excel where if you're looking at a very large sheet and we uh, freeze particular rows or columns so that we don't lose visibility if i want to move that freeze pane to a different column i can so let's say i want everything till vendor number to be static when i scroll to the right so i need to click on that same red triangle again and i need to choose the first option which is the set freeze pane so when i do that as you can see the system has moved it from the description column to the vendor number column and right at the end when you're done with all your changes you need to click on done so that your personalizations get saved and obviously next time i come back to the list of items all the changes that i have done now will be remembered and i don't have to keep redoing them as you can see i'm scrolling to the right but all my columns till the vendor number value are not changing so these are some of the personalizations that you can do to a list screen or page and if you open up a particular item and when we see one record at a time in Navision or Business Central terminology, we call it a card. So like we moved columns on a list page, we can also move or rearrange fields on a card page. So I'm again going to personalize this particular page. And as you could add columns, you could also add fields on a card page. So as you can see, there's only one available field which I have not used, but if I wanted to use it, I need to simply drag and drop it into the section where I want and under the between the fields where I want to see it. And it's come. And in the very same way, if there are some fields that I'm not particularly interested in or I'm not using, I can get rid of them by clicking on that field looking for this red triangle and then saying hide. So next time I open an item record, I'm only seeing the fields that are important to me. And the other way, just like we could move columns around, we can actually move fields around as well. So if you look at the category here, I can move that around within the same section or I could also move it to a different section. So the field that we just added via personalization, we can move it around into different sections or fast tabs as we call them. And again, to save my personalizations, all I need to do is click on done. So these are some of the personalizations available on a card page. And one very nice and handy feature that has come in is or now you can also rearrange your menus using personalization so i'm going to open a sales order as an example and as you are aware with any screen or document there are a lot of menu options or actions possible on that page which is available on this ribbon here and sometimes uh, there are 
two or three clicks that I need to make before I can uh, get to the action that I want to do, right? And if this view is static, then it's kind of challenging for us to remember where exactly where my action is. As an example, if I go under functions and I wanted to create a purchase order, so it, it requires quite a few clicks. At the same time, I also need to remember where this action is specifically in the menu. So the nice thing that has come up now is we can actually personalize the menu as well. So I'm going to click on personalizing this page. And now let's say create purchase order is something that I'm going to frequently use. So when I come to this function, now I can drag and drop my action to a different part of the menu. So my usual way of going about it, I usually use the process menu. So anything which is like a quick shortcut for me, I'll drag, drag and drop into the process menu. And let's say I'm going to save this personalization. So what the system has done for me is actually moved that link into the process menu. So next time I can actually do this. All my favorite actions or frequent actions on a particular page, I could drag and drop them into the process menu. So the next time I just need to open process and then I can run that action on a single click. So this is a very handy recent personalization option that has come in. So I'm going to move on to our next topic which is filtering and views and this again for our nav audience this works in a very similar way in the vision as well you must, some of you might already be using this feature so let's go back to the product i'm going to open this time let's say items an example So I'm onto my list of items. In this example, obviously there are only 20 odd items, but some of my having hundreds or sometimes thousands items. And we need to a lot of times do certain filtering to only look at a particular group of items at a time. So as you can see, we'll probably use the item category code as a nice example today. I have some items which are categorized as chairs, some as tables, and some as miscellaneous and so on. So let's say I want to only look at uh, tables to begin with. So how do I create a filter for table? There are multiple ways of going about it. First and the most simple, simplest way is if you click on a particular row where the category is table, and then you go to the header and you click on the item category code when you click on this down arrow there are some options that pop up and if you see the fourth option it says filter to this value so when i click on that system is enabled filtering for me you can see and it has also applied the filter on table for this column and to see what filters are actually being used, I can click on this funnel icon in the top right corner. So there you can see, this is the filter that's already applied, which is item category code table. If I remove this filter, the other way of applying the same filter could be, I click on the header row. Let me hide this information. And then if I go to the third option, which is just filter. So what the system will do is it'll still enable filtering on that particular column, but it is not going to apply the filter for table by default. So as you can see, it has added item category code as a filter for me. But then I need to drop down and select table or let's say chair. And then the system will apply the filter on chairs for me. So this is the second way of applying a filter. And the third way, if you want, this is especially useful when you want to filter on two or more columns at a time. 
when I start from the list page, I simply make the filtering pane available. And over here, as you can see, under filter list by, I can click on add filter. As important thing to know here is when I click on add filter first, it is going to show me all my visible fields. So I can scroll down and search category code, or I can also type. And select that column. And then in the same way, I will choose tables, chairs, or miscellaneous, the filter that I want to apply. And this, like I said, we could keep on adding multiple filters. So let's say I want to filter on vendor number next. So even amongst miscellaneous, I want to only look at a particular supplier. So I can do that. So in this way, you can keep adding columns or filters. And one nice feature, when you go filter list by and say add filter, like I said, initially it is showing you only your visible fields, but the filtering is also possible on fields which you have not necessarily used in your view. So if you scroll down, after the section on visible fields ends, there is something called as available fields. And this is actually an, an exhaustive list of all fields or columns available on the item master record. So you could easily filter on any value, which is not even visible as a table. And sometimes it's nice to have that. Right. The other type of filtering which I wanted to show you is filter totals by. And usually the chart of account screen is a good example to show this feature. So, so far the filtering that we looked at, we were filtering on a particular column. But as you know, in the vision of Business Central, in a lot of master records, there are some total fields which are calculated on the fly. So in chart of accounts, net change and balance are my classic examples. So when I open my chart of accounts, I can see those figures. And sometimes I want to filter on these figures and good example is using dates. So if when I open the filtering pane under filter list by, there's also another option called filter totals by. So if I click on that and I go add filter, this actually shows me a different sort of list. So on a lot of our total column system has the ability to put some filtering on the totaling. So if I example choose date filter and then I could probably put in a range of dates for which I want to see my net change. So if I put it as let's say 1st Jan 19 to 31st December 19. So what that's going to do automatically now, uh, this is applicable on the net change column. As you can see, a lot of my net change values have changed. So all the figures that you see now are filtered to this range, which is calendar year 2019 only. And I can have a quick check or like a drill down and verify. So as you can see, it has automatically put that posting date filter on the net change column. So this in this example, I used a date filter. Uh, on your items, you might want to see your inventory by a particular location. So you could also use a location filter as well. So that's kind of the difference between the filter list by and the filter totals by where you're not actually filtering on your columns, but you're updating your totals to reflect a particular period or location and so on. So that's about filter list by and filter totals by. But one last feature that I wanted to show you is the ability to save some filters as views and reuse them. So I've come back 
to my list of items and as you can see it's already filtered on category miscellaneous uh, it could be possible that I frequently come back to business central and I want to check miscellaneous category so but I don't want to every time start with the list of items and then apply my filter I want a quick way or a shortcut to use this filter so to do that there is this feature called views in the top left corner of the screen so once you have applied a filter or a set of filters you can actually save that as a view so if you see this button here i'm going to click there and this is where it is asking you to give that view a name so i'll just say Mr. now saved so i'm going to come out of items and i'm going to reopen my list of items and to begin with system has uh, opened my full list of items but as you can see under all there are these two views which i can select so on a single click i'm just selecting my miscellaneous view and system has automatically applied those filters so with each view the system remembers what filter or set of filters that you applied and it automatically uses them and i can create as many views as i like so as I mentioned, this is applicable to any list page. In this case, I'm looking at the item master. You could be doing it to your vendors, customers, chart of accounts, or documents such as sales orders and purchase orders. So that's about filtering and views. And as I said to our NAV audience, most of these features are already there in earlier versions of Navision as well. Right. So the next feature that I wanted to show you is page inspection, or sometimes we refer to this as Zoom. So if we go back to the list of items, as you can see, this is a list page, and I have a restriction on the number of columns that I can see at a time. I could obviously personalize and add many more columns but even then i need to keep scrolling to the right to see additional data against a particular item so a quick way of looking at all the fields or columns in a record is what we call as a page inspection so if i pick one item as an example which is my amsterdam lamp and i want to see all information available in the system against the item there is something which i can use called page inspection so i need to select the row and in the top right corner of the screen next to the settings there is a help button i'm going to click on that and then the first option over there i'm going to open up help and support and you'll get this small pop-up and you need to scroll towards the end and the very last option over there it's called inspect pages and data so once i click on that this page inspection panel has popped up on my right hand side so as you can see here there is a section called table fields and this list here is actually an exhaustive list of all fields in that table and a good thing over here is if i want to check on a particular field and i know its name i can even search on it so there's a search icon here and quite often you want to see some posting related information so the moment i type posting system is already uh, brought up only those fields which have the keyword in it so i can see some quick posting information related to the item straight away so this is what we refer to as the page inspection and towards the top it has some more information like the name of the page and its id and also the table that you're looking at and the id of that table 
So I've done this page inspection on an item record, but we can always do it on documents as well. So I'm going to open up a sales order. I'm going to do the same page inspection on this sales order. It's a quick thing to know. Typically, when you're looking at a document, there is a header information, there are also line information. So just in the back end, there are actually two separate tables. So when I open up the page inspection, as you can see, it's looking at the sales order and my sales header. So by sales header, it is talking about information that is common to all the items on the sales order, such as my customer details, address, shipping, uh, billing details, and so on. But if I want to look at a particular line, the moment I click on that line, the inspection details have changed. So it has automatically updated itself to the sales line, and then I can look at fields only to this particular row, and I can do a search as well. So this is how page inspection works in Business Central. And just very quickly for our NAV customers, I'll show you how you can do the Zoom feature in Navision as well. So I've got my list of items open. Uh, if you go into the top left corner of the screen, you open up this menu, you go to help and you say about this page. And uh, it brings up these four to five sections, but the second section over here called the table fields is the same as the what we uh, saw in the page inspection view of Business Central. So when I go to table fields and expand them, this is showing me all fields in that record. In this case, all fields relevant to that item that we're looking at. So a lot of time when we're investigating something or troubleshooting and posting error this about a page inspection feature is quite helpful and the edit in excel i don't know how many business central customers already use it but it has definitely what was introduced in business central and it has improved over time so i'm going to use to demonstrate the edit in excel feature i'm going back to our business central i'll probably use a journal as an example, so let's say I'm working on a general journal. I'll open up my batch, and I've got these three sample lines created. And a lot of time, especially in journals, it's much more easier to edit the, enter the information in Excel rather than having to add it one line at a time in Business Central and go through all the checks. So if you open up the page menu, there is this link over call, you know, called edit in Excel. So when I click on it, it's actually downloading an Excel file on my machine. And when you save the Excel file and open it on your local machine, it's going to look something like this. So it's going to open up this data connector information on the right hand side. And obviously, when you do it, it'll take a few seconds to download and retrieve the server configuration information and then download all the rows. But this is what the outcome will be. As you can see, I'm looking at the same screen, but in Excel. And obviously, it's much easier for me to make additions or changes in Excel. So I can actually work on my same page in this Excel screen. And if you look at this connector again, and towards the bottom, there are these different functions. So first, an important one is refresh. Let's say if there are two users working on the same journal, and you have downloaded the information into Excel, but there could be some other users updating that journal directly in Business Central while you work in Excel. The refresh button would actually update it. It will uh, go to Business Central and check all the records that you're working on. If there are any changes, it will sync those changes. And once you have done all your changes, you would actually go and publish. So when I hit on the publish button, it sends this information back to Business Central. 
and when I come back here, all the changes that I've done in Excel would be visible here. So it's a very useful feature to have, which is the edit in Excel function. And I used a journal example as an example. You could do in a lot of list screens as well. So that was about edit in Excel. And the last one and a very useful feature. It's again you are. It's been there since the Navision days. Is the ability to save report filters. Going back to our product. And I'm going to use the inventory sales statistics report as an example. As you most of you might know, when you run a report the second, the third time, or later, in a lot of reports, you will see this option called saved settings. And by default, system remembers the settings that you used when you last ran the report, and it brings up those settings. So that's okay when I want to use the same report settings all the time. But the example that I'm going to use here is at the end of each month, I want a different statistics report for let's say all my categories. So what I could do is I've run the report last time for tables. So system remembers that. Then I'm going to change it to let's say chairs or miscellaneous and move on. So if I want to run this report three times, at the end of each month and in this example i'm only using one column but there could be a lot of practical scenarios where there are two three filters involved i don't want to keep changing them all the time so the option that you have is you can save some filters so under this menu if you go into the drop down you can see there are other views so i've created these three views already for tables miscellaneous and chairs so when I click on one of those views, just like it did on the views on the list page, it automatically changes those report filters. So I'm going to let it move from chairs to miscellaneous. And it's done that. So this is how I can reuse a report filter after set creating it. And I'll very quickly show you how to create those views as well. So let's say I want to run it for all items with a blank category code. So I'm going to use two single quotes. But to save this itself as a view, I'm going to go into this drop down. There's an option here showing select from full list. So I'm going to bring that up. So this shows me the existing views which are already there. But over here in this, there's an option called as new. So I'll click on that option to create a new set of report filters. I need to give it a name. I'll just say blank category. And the last option, which is I want to share this report filters with other users, I can turn this on as well. And the moment I click on OK, system has brought up that report screen again, but this is not to run the report, but it's actually prompting me to save my filters. So I'm going to enter all the filters that I want to save into that particular view. And let's say this one. And click on OK. So once I do that, as you can see, it's created another view called blank category for me. And next time when I run that report, instead of using last used, I can choose blank category and when i did that the two filters that i had applied got automatically applied to this report as well and then i can this kind of saves me time rather than re-entering my filters using one or two simple clicks i can keep changing my report filters on the fly and run the report as i said this feature is unavailable in a recent navision versions as well I think it's very useful, but a lot of users are not aware of it. I think yeah, we're running out of time as well, and I think I've covered most items on our agenda. Thanks, everybody.